Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Nahmadullah ta'ala wa nasafir ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Nashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa azwajihi wa sallatu alayhi wa la farrashid mahadim min ba'di. Huzal in mati ala al-tahqiq, huzal in minhum ala al-miti, khulafa rasulah ala al-tahqiq, humar al-mu'minin. Hazrat Abu Bakar, Umar Usman wa Ali, wa ala baki sahabat sahabat ni wa ta'alaih ma ajma'in. Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun. Itaqna ta inna allahumma alladhina tukal ladhina hu mufsilun. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafi namdiya mursalin. Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the universes. May all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi sallatu wa salam. May peace and blessings be upon his noble family and his blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the Mashaykh of this way. May peace and blessings be upon the noble Ottoman Sultans. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. May Allah return their rights to them soon. Ya Rabbi, help the believers. Ya Rabbi, help the innocent whose blood is being spilt without account by those evil ones who have become Firaun's and Nemruts upon the earth and those who have become their friends and supporters. Ya Rabbi, just as you brought an end to Firaun and Nemrut, bring an end to the tyrants of this time. Ya Rabbi, send us a Sultan. Ya Rabbi, send Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam. Amen. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, we are asking Allah to bless us in this last Juma of the holy month of Muharram. And we're asking His protection from the days of Safar that are approaching. O believers, after the month of Safar, we will enter into the holy month of Rabiul Awal, the month of the birth of the Holy Prophet. We should use this time as a reminder to understand that there is no creation, no universe. No guidance, no Islam, no Iman, no Ihsan, no Tasawuf, nothing without the Holy Prophet alayhi sallatu wa salam. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Hazrat Isa, Ya Isa, believe in Muhammad alayhi sallatu wa salam in order those from among your people who will be present at his time to believe in him. Because if it were not for Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, I would not have created Adam alayhi salam. If it were not for Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, I would not have created paradise or hellfire. I've placed the arsh over water and it shook. But when I wrote on it, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, it became still. Without believing him and loving him, there is no faith. And without believing in him, loving him and obeying him, there is no obedience to Allah Zul Jalal. The Mashaykh are here to represent that Holy Prophet wasalam, and to make us to understand the path that the Sahabi Kiram took to enter into the station of belief, of love and of faith. The framework for that understanding is bayat. That word, that word in Arabic, baya, it comes from business. Commerce, selling. Because when you give bayat, you are sold. You belong to the one that you give bayat to. What is that transaction? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing in Surah Al-Tawbah saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Surely Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth in exchange of a promise that paradise shall be theirs. They fight in the way of Allah and kill and are killed on which there is a true promise as made in the Taurat and the Injil and the Quran. And who can be more faithful to his promise than Allah? So rejoice in the deal you have made. And that is the great achievement. Sadaqallah al -Azim. So how serious is the bayat? How serious is keeping the promise? How serious did the Sahabe Kiram take it? We must learn from them and tariqat 
And this tariqat especially comes for us to learn about them and to try to follow them. As Sahib al-Sahib said, the Holy Prophet ﷺ was bringing the Sahabi kiram, teaching them, teaching them to teach us. Just one instant, look at that Prophet ﷺ, was enough for them. Nothing else. But it took 23 years time of work and the Prophet ﷺ worked with them for 23 years. And in 23 years' time, every incident that happened, the Prophet ﷺ showed the answers through teaching the Sahabi Kiram, teaching us. And the words of Sahib al Sahib, they speak the truth. So those incidents are like treasures for us that make us, to help us to understand. And one incident like that, which makes us understand the seriousness of the commitment of the bayat, the seriousness of being in jama'at, the seriousness of obedience to the Holy Prophet wasalam, the seriousness of fixing a mistake. That is the incident of Hazrat Kaab ibn Malik radiallahu an in Tabuk. In the ninth year after Hijrah, the Holy Prophet wasalam, announced to the Sahabi Kiram that they were going to Tabuk, a town between Medina and Damascus. The year before, 3,000 Muslims had defeated 200,000 Byzantines and their Arab allies at the Battle of Muta near the Jordan River. The Byzantine emperor, in revenge, wanted to invade Arabia with his Arab Christian allies. The Holy Prophet ﷺ got news of this and announced to all the Muslims that they were going out to battle and that he was leading the army. There are so many incidents that happened in the Battle of Tabuk from the behavior of the hypocrites to the difficulty of the journey, to the poor Muslims who couldn't join. All of those incidents have lessons upon lessons for us and that 20-day expedition was the last time that the Holy Prophet ﷺ went out on a military campaign. Allahumma salli alayhi. But today we will mention the incident of what happened to Hazrat Dikab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu from his own words that is preserved for us. When we hear this story, we cannot think for a split second that we are better or that we can judge. Hasha astaghfirullah. This is for us to understand the shan and the greatness of the Sahabis and how they lived. Imam Ahmad recorded this incident. We are relating it and making the words easier to understand, inshallah. Hazrat Iqab said, when the time for the safar, the expedition for Tabuk happened, I had never been stronger or wealthier at that time. But I stayed behind. Wallahi, I never had two she camels before that time. But I stayed behind at the time of Tabuk. In Tabuk, Rasulullah faced intense heat. A long journey, the desert, and a huge number of enemy soldiers. He clearly announced the battle, but in the past, he used to hide it. But in this, he clearly announced it. He announced it this time so everyone could get ready for battle. There were so many Muslims that he could not even list their names in a book or in a list. So any man who intended not to join the battle thought they could be hidden unless Allah revealed their absence through divine Revelation. Rasulullah fought the battle when the fruits were ripe and the shade was nice. And I found myself turning towards that. Rasulullah the Sahabi started to get ready for battle. And I would walk out to get ready with them, but then I would turn back without doing anything. I would say to myself, I can eventually do that too if I want. So I kept on delaying until everything was ready and the Holy Prophet and the companions left. Then I said, I'll get ready in one or two days, then I'll go too. The next morning I went out to get ready, but again turned back without being prepared. This kept happening until they were far gone and I missed the battle group. Still I was intending to leave and catch up to them and I wish I had done it, but that wasn't what happened. 
So after Holy Prophet Laysatwasam left Medina, whenever I went out and walked among the people who were left in the city, I was broken and sad when I saw the only people left were hypocrites or those who were so weak that Allah had excused them. Holy Prophet Laysatwasam didn't ask about me until he got to Tabuk. When he got there, he said, What did Kaab bin Malik do? A man from Banu Salima said, Ya Rasulullah, he has been stopped. He has been stopped by his fancy clothes and is looking at himself with pride. Muaz bin Jabal said, what a bad thing you said. Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, we know nothing about Kaab except good. Holy Prophet ﷺ stayed silent. When I heard Holy Prophet was on his way back to Medina, I was anxious and started to think of fake excuses. I said, how can I escape his anger tomorrow? I started asking wise people in my family for advice. But when I heard Holy Prophet had reached Medina, all evil and false excuses left my mind. And I knew I could never get out of this situation by making up a lie. So I made firm intention that no matter what, I would speak the truth. Holy Prophet got back in the morning and whenever he returned from a journey, he used to go to the masjid first pray two rakats, then sit with the jamaat. So all the people who stayed behind and didn't join the battle came and started making up lies and swearing false oaths before him. There were more than 80 people like that. Holy Prophet outwardly accepted their excuses, asked Allah to forgive them, and left the secrets of their hearts for Allah to judge. When I came to him and gave him salams, he smiled the smile of anger and said, Come. So I came walking until I sat before him and he said to me, What stopped you from joining us? Didn't you have an animal to, hide, to ride? I said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi. If I was sitting in front of any other person in the world, I would have gotten out of his anger by making up excuses. Wallahi, I have the gift of speaking fluently and eloquently. But Wallahi, I know well that if I lied to you today to seek your favor, Allah would make you angry with me very soon. But if I tell you the truth, even though it will pull your anger, I hope for Allah's forgiveness. Wallahi, I'd never been stronger or wealthier than when I stayed behind you and didn't join this battle. Holy Prophet said, as for this man, as for this man, he has spoken the truth. Get up until Allah judges your case. There were two other Sahabis who were in the same situation. Hazrat Kaab says, Holy Prophet والسلام, forbade all Muslims from talking to us three who stayed behind. So we kept away from the people and they changed the way they acted with us until the land where I lived was so strange to me it was as though I didn't know it. We stayed like this for 50 nights. The other two Sahabis just stayed in the houses crying. I was younger and healthier than them. So I would still go out and attend namaz in Jamaat and walk around Medina. But nobody would talk to me. I would come and give salams to Holy Prophet when he was sitting after namaz. But I would wonder if his lips even moved to return my salams. Then I would pray near him and look at him carefully. 
I saw when I prayed he would look at me, but when I looked at him, he turned his face from me. When this harsh attitude and boycott from everyone kept going on, I went to my cousin who was my best friend and said, Salam. He didn't return his salams. I said, Ya Abu Qatada, I ask you by Allah, don't you know that I love Allah and His Rasul? He kept quiet. I asked him again, but he stayed quiet. I asked him again and he said, Allah and His Rasul know better. Then my eyes flooded with tears. During this time, the king of the Ghassanids, the Arab Christian allies of the Byzantines, sent a letter to Hazrat Iqab saying, I heard your friend Muhammad وسلم, treated you very badly. Don't live somewhere where you are put down and your rights get taken away. Come, join with us and we will make you happy. Hazrat Iqab says, when I read it, I said, this is a test. So I took the letter to the oven and burnt it in the fire. When 40 nights of our boycott passed, Holy Prophet ordered my wife and I to stay away from each other. We stayed like this for 10 more nights until 50 nights were completed from the start of the boycott. On the 50th morning, I was praying Fajr. It felt like my soul was tied up and the earth was squeezing me. Then I heard a man who climbed the mountain yelling, O oh, Kaab bin Malik, be happy, good news. I fell down in sajda and realized his forgiveness had come. Holy Prophet announced after Fajr that Allah had accepted our tawbah. An announcer came to my house to give me the good news. I gave him the only two clothes I had as a gift and I had to borrow a pair of clothes to go to the masjid. When I got to the masjid, people started crowding me as groups saying, Mubarak to you that Allah accepted your tawbah. When I greeted Holy Prophet ﷺ, his face was shining with happiness and he said, be happy with the best day you had ever seen since your mother gave birth to you. I asked him, is this forgiveness from you or from Allah? He said, no, it is from Allah. Whenever he والسلام, was happy, his face would shine like a piece of the moon. And we all knew this. When I sat in front of him, I said, Ya Rasulullah, because of this acceptance of my tawbah, I want to give all my wealth a sacrifice for the sake of Allah and His Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ said, keep some of your wealth, it will be better for you. So I said, I will keep my share from the Khaybar battle. Ya Rasulullah, Allah has saved me for telling the truth. So it is part of my tawbah that I will only tell the truth for as long as I live. May Allah raise their stations. And the ayat that was revealed to Hazrat Iqab, an ayat was revealed to Hazrat Iqab, and the other two sahaba in Surat al Tawbah saying, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Allah has forgiven the Prophet the Muhajirin and the Ansar who followed him in the time of distress after the hearts of a party of them had nearly deviated. But he accepted their repentance. Certainly he is unto them full of kindness, most merciful. And the three who stayed behind until for them the earth, vast as it is, was straightened and their souls were straightened to them. And they perceived that there is no fleeing from Allah and no refuge but with Him. Then He forgave them 
that they might beg for his pardon. Verily, Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance. Most merciful. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and be with those who are Siddiqeen. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Hazrat Iqab said about the ayat, I swear by Allah, other than guiding me to Islam, Allah has never given me a greater blessing than that I did not tell a lie to Allah's messenger. That would have caused me to perish, just as those who lied to him perished. Allah described those who told lies with the worst description he ever gave anyone. May Allah be pleased with Hazrat Iqab and raise his station. O oh, believers, this history is an example for us that we must take and we must understand with intelligence. This jamaat, this way, our shaykh, we are not here to be normal, to be regular. We are here to follow the Holy Prophet and his sahabi kiram as much as we can. Their lives and what they went through, it is a guide and instruction for us. Listen to Sahib al Saif and his explanation of how we must act and how we must think. His words are the best guide for us. We are approaching those days and we are watching the hadith of the Rasulullah and we are very happy about it. He is saying Islam began strange and is going to end strange. Blessings and protection to the strangers, especially those who are going to come in the Ahir Zaman in the end of times. That news is for the people who are living now because we are in the second Jahiliya time. And we are almost at the end of that Jahiliya too. The good news is that the protector is waiting to appear, inshallah. Rahman. We must be looking forward to that. The protector who is going to appear. We must be looking forward to that. Are we ready for that? Are we ready to leave our mothers? Or are we ready to leave our fathers? Are we ready to leave our wives? Or are we ready to leave our husbands? Or are we ready to leave our children? You must search in yourself. You must look into yourself because Holy Prophet is saying, those who are going to reach to those days, when entering through that door, a difficult test is going to be waiting for them too. The Sahabi Kiram, they were tested. They have been tested with their lives and with everything that they had. They have been tested and they passed. And Allah is warning us, saying to us, do you think that you are going to enter into the same paradises with those without going through the same tests that they went through? Do you think so? Think again. So Holy Prophet is saying to us, if you hear the takbir of Mahdi salam, if you have a newborn baby in your hand, you must drop it and run after that. It is to show you and I it is to show the believers how serious that matter is going to be. That matter is not going to be such that you are going to be able to say, let me make some time, let me run after this one, let me try to protect that one. No, that door is closing too now. That door is shutting down. Anyone who wanted to turn their way, it was enough for them. 1,400 years, for 1,400 years, Islam is calling, but the believers are still sleeping. Shaitan knows that Mahdi salam's hands are almost on his ears to say Allahu Akbar. He knows that. That's why Shaitan is running top speed to say, who am I going to move from that that, uh, that have escaped from my hands? That's what Shaitan is running to do and he's using whatever is necessary to do that. But he is not going to reach to his aim. It is impossible to reach to his aim. Islam is standing up Islam is not standing up because of you or I, because of weak servants like us, no. But Islam is still standing on the shoulders of 124,000 awliyaullah. They are holding it. Any one of them can fix all these problems instantly. But they have proper manners. They are sitting and waiting because every hadith that the Prophet said must come out. For that they are sitting and waiting, and we are sitting and waiting. Allah is putting us through certain tests every single day. When the tests are happening, don't think that announcements are going to come non-stop to say to you, we are making the tests. Simple things are coming as tests. 
This is being said from the time of the Holy Prophet So that's also enough warning for us for 1400 years. Why do you think that Allah and His Prophet are mentioning in the Quran and the Holy Hadith about the lives of the Sahabi Kiram? Why do you think they are saying whatever difficulties came to them? Do you think it's just to fill up the papers? To fill up the books? It is to show us, it is to say to us, watch out, this may happen to you. And for that, you must take that one as an example because now that one is your role model. You must follow the footsteps of that one if you want to enter into the paradise of those ones. Amen. And Sahib al speaks the truth. <laughs>